so many churches pastor shakes which is right the world is full of religions and denominations elder duncan and it is important for us to know whether or not it matters where we worship and how we worship lest we end up worshiping in vain are we together jesus talked about those who are worshiping him elder pastor clark but they are worshiping in vain and therefore it is easy sister right for one to understand why it is that those who don't worship god any at all elder Hewitt, will not make it into the kingdom but when you read a passage like Matthew 7, 21, that, that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, worshiping people, will enter the kingdom, it makes you stop and think for a moment. Amen. When you read Matthew 15, verse 9, that in vain some people are worshiping, you're like, oops, it's not only the ungodly who will be lost, but also the godly who are missing the mark am i talking to somebody so I, I want you to invite all the religions all the denominations all your friends of other places to come and watch so that we might get some instructions and clarity from god's words tonight we've set a basic premise from the beginning pastor nevins that the biggest problem of humanity is not COVID-19. It is the trans world pandemic called what? Sin. Sin. Social distancing can't protect you from it. Mask wearing can't keep you from it. Small gatherings can't secure you from it. Hand washing can't cleanse you from it. And staying at home can't shield you from it. Only Jesus can heal you from it. And the vaccine is available to all those who want to find the solution for it. The hope quote from episode 7, last night's message, which was what everybody, what was the topic last night? The dragon and the virgin. Satan is angry because he recognized he couldn't kick God out of his possession. I think Satan has a little jamaican in him love to fight over people property hello somebody uh, don't get me wrong i know that this happens all over the world but i'm a jamaican i'm sticking with my folks mm -hmm. jamaicans love to fight over people property satan has a little jamaican in him and some jamaicans have a little satan in them sometimes too much for the little but when Satan recognized that he couldn't take over God's heaven and he was cast to the earth, he recognized that that was an indication that his destruction is near. So the Bible says that he went to fight against the woman representing what? What does a pure woman represent in Revelation 12? The church of God because he knows that he has a what? Short time. So he fights against the offspring. Those who keep the what? Commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So here's the hope quote. Even Satan knows that he has a short time. Hence, he's working overtime to get you into hell. Mm. Yet many people believe that they have all the time in the world to get right with God. Mm -hmm. Anyone who is watching who is still living in sin, your ticket is booked, but you can cancel the flight by making it right with God. Tomorrow morning, 5.30, join us again for Morning Manor. And then in the evening at 5.30 for our Bible study. We are starting sooner because we only have half an hour to do step four in the seven steps to eternal life series. Then at six, we'll have our guest presenter, naturopathic medical doctor, Dr. Michelle Hamilton, who will be looking at the subject, how are you? very important presentation from six to seven don't miss it then on friday evening when we come back here to live stream remembering that the health presentation will be on our zoom platform so come early because if we are full in zoom 
we will then stream if not we will keep it in zoom mm -hmm. so if you want to be in zoom if you suspect many people will come on board make sure that you come out early then on friday evening we're going to the obstetrics and gynecology department as we look at the subject heaven's maternity ward we're going to do some delivery here friday night heaven's maternity ward then saturday evening god's willing sabbath evening six o'clock to date or not to date it's a zoom rap session misfit versus unfit whether it's better to remain single or to get jingle so come with your special person to be or your special person who is or even used to be bring them come important subject and relationship but tonight so many churches which is right pray with me everlasting father know god as we open up your words to explore them empower me by the holy spirit that as i broach such an important subject i may speak not my own words but those that are in your words and that my mind is inspired with by the holy ghost i pray that you may communicate clearly to me and through me and to your people that in the end we may all be edified to the honor and the glory of your name in jesus christ we pray amen, amen. so many churches which is right our key text uh, luke eleven twenty eight. you know it by now blessed are they who hear the word of god and, and obey it. it blessed are they who hear the word of god and do what obey and it. obey it why are there are so many churches and which is right does it really matter who you worship and where you worship and how you worship as long as you worship first of all you must understand that the great controversy between good and evil is all about worship god as creator demands our worship he's not a tyrant however tyrant but so he has given us good reasons to worship him but with the free will pastor clark as you will assist me tonight um, he allows you to reject his worship if you so desire and you cannot have it both ways uh, your allegiance is either to god or it is to the devil how do you know those who worship the true god john 10 27 and 28 is very instructive what does it say pastor clark john, john 10 27 and 28 john 10 27 and 28 john 10 john 10 27 and 28 is very important you can say what you want to say but listen to what the word of god says 27 and 28 my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me 28 and i give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my, my sheep do what hear my, my voice. voice if you are god's sheep you will do what the lord says somebody say amen in daniel chapter 7 25 speaking of the fourth kingdom you mm -hmm. remember babylon mm -hmm. and Medo persia and greece mm -hmm. and roma mm -hmm. the bible tells us that he shall speak pompous, pompous words, words against the most high and shall persecute the saints of the most high and shall intend to change what times and, and laws. laws now this kingdom which speaks about uh, the, the rome in its papal stages uh, the bible prophesied that at some point in time this religious organization would have the audacity tenacity and um, dexterity and verbosity to change times and laws but one who changes time and laws must have some level of authority pastor shakes mm -hmm. and one must therefore ask what kind of authority mm -hmm. could a man have to believe that he's in a position to change god's time and laws are we together mm -hmm. in matthew chapter 16 jesus had a conversation with the disciples and verse 13 asks when jesus says when jesus came into the region of caesarea philippi he asked the disciples saying who do men, men say, say that, that what I, am. I the son of man what did they say pastor clark so they said same some say john the baptist yes. some say elijah 
Others say Jeremiah are one of the prophets. But then he asks a very important question. It doesn't matter what others think of Jesus. Everybody has to know who Jesus is. So we ask them, but who do you say that I am? What did they answer, Pastor? Simon Clark? Peter answered and said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you what? Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood never revealed it unto you. It was your college professor in the seminary. It was not your church elder or pastor who taught you. But my what? My father mm -hmm. who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are what? Peter. You are what? Peter. Peter. And on this what? Rock. rock i build my church now the word for rock is petra but the word for peter is petros petros pastor shakes is like a slingshot stone mm -hmm. a little pebble we can roll all over the place but petra means a solid rock mm -hmm. jesus was pulling upon he was saying peter you are a rolling stone but upon this rock that cannot be moved i build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it amen. amen some take this chapter to say that peter was the first pope and therefore in verse 19 this is what it says i will give you the keys of the heaven kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven so they said that this was where god was giving peter authority that anything he decides down here will happen up there mm -hmm. but when you understand the context of the text you will realize that what jesus was saying to peter when you are in oneness with god the will of god will become your will amen. so anything amen. you're binding down here is because God don't bind it up here Amen. and anything you loose down here it's because God has already loosed it up there come on church of God Amen. let me give some clarity Pastor Clark it's not every dead the apostles raise it's only you take us we hear about mm -hmm. come on somebody Amen. because I know the whole of them did for loose come on somebody it's not every sick they had healed so people still died are we together Pastor Shakes, according to the scripture, Paul and all the, the, the apostles who heal people never determined when to heal people, but the Holy Spirit would have instructed them Amen. when he was about to make a demonstration of the power of God. Come on, somebody. That is why every time you pray, you have to pray not according to my will, but okay. what? Thy will, will be because done. it may not be the will of God to do the thing, though it is something that he practices. Are we together? So when you are one with God, anything you choose to do is in keeping with the standards of god somebody say amen amen, amen. so they said peter was the first pope but if the church was built upon that stone it mash up long time because listen to what happens in the same conversation verse 22 pastor clark then, when jesus told peter and the apostles that he came to die for the sins of brownstone die for bamboo die for alexandria and same Deca districts listen to what peter said to my savior then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Look at Peter about him rebuking Jesus. Saying, saying far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And listen to what Jesus said to Peter. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Mercy. You are an offense to me. An offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men hello somebody do you see what is happening there satan caused peter to feel so proud just because peter got a good answer in the bible class elder joel just because he made an excellent point in the sabbath school in get kakati hello somebody oh from a foreign audience he got full of himself and now that pride kicked him satan made him feel so good he started now to feel that he is the police for jesus telling jesus what he can do and cannot do jesus said get thee behind the satan mm -hmm. sometimes when you see some people behave somewhere satan take them over hello somebody hello somebody 
But thank God, Peter was eventually converted. Amen. So Peter, they claim, was the first pope and God gave him the, ch the church, the key, so that they can change times and law. But that is not according to the scriptures. Are we together? John 14 verse 15 mm -hmm. is instructive to everybody who claims to be a child of God. It doesn't matter what position you have in the church. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. It doesn't matter how much money you return for tithes and for offering. The only thing that matters in determining those who are the true children of God and those who are the true church of God is found from the mouth of God himself. John 14 verse 15. Pastor Clark, what does the, the message say if you love me keep my commandments look at that if you love me do what keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments now some keep some and leave the others but all of god's commandments must be kept are we together now genesis 2 1 to 3 shows us the problematic commandment in most cases thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he has done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has done. Then God did what church? Bless the seventh day and sanctified it. Because in it he did what? Rested, rested. from all his work which God had created and made. Mm -hmm. Now somebody said, Pastor, this never told you what the day is called but the number of the day. And how do we know the number of the day? I'll get back to it very soon. Hmm. So some say that the Sabbath of God was made for the Jews. Which part the Jews them there? Hello, somebody? The Sabbath was made a creation. Long before Abraham, the father of the Jews, was born. Abraham never came on the scene until literally hundreds of years later on. So the Sabbath could not have been made for the Jews because it did it long before Jews. Somebody say amen. Mm -hmm. So that is why when God gave the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 verses 8 through 11, listen what he said concerning the Fourth Commandment, Pastor Clark. Mm -hmm. Remember. Wait a second. What is the key word here, Pastor? Remember. You cannot tell somebody to remember something when you never tell them before. Amen. Hello, yes, somebody. God told them other things that they would have known, you know. But he wanted them to know that, listen, I know that while in Egyptian bondage, you have mm -hmm. lost sight of my commandments. But I want you to remember. What did he say? Remember, remember what? Remember the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day to do what? Keep it Holy. Read the text. Read the text. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Yes. Six days labor and do all your work. But but the seventh day is mm -hmm. the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Wait a second, preacher. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Adventist church. No. The seventh day is the Sabbath of this Adventist church. Isn't that what you see? No. Whose Sabbath is it? The Sabbath of the Lord your God. Tell us more about it. In, In it, it, yes. You shall do no work. Yes. You, nor yes. your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your fee servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your My gates. brothers, listen to that. So when you are a true Sabbath keeper, you can't do a church and somebody around the taxi. You can't Amen. do a church and the media, the yard, a clean up. Amen. You can't be in church and somebody running the shop. Hello, somebody. And you can't have your visitors come for the weekend and they are at home watching Netflix while you are at church worshiping. Amen. It's the seventh day. An individual thing or is it a set day of each week hmm. because hmm. nowadays some calendar sister Zorian starts on Monday and then this traditional one start on what Sunday hmm. some people will tell the pastor it's Wednesday my week start because I'm gonna work till Wednesday hmm. they start my shift so is the seventh day meant to be an individual day that you get to choose your day or is it a set day? Let us look at the scripture. In Exodus 16, when God was blessing the children of, of Israel with manna, 
bread from heaven God instructed them that every single day he will send the manna and they must not leave anything overnight read it in your own timing and so some of them who never wanted to trust God each day for the daily bread decided to disobey and the Bible says that the thing what stank stink and it and when they smell up the place God said these rebellious people keep testing me but on the Friday, the preparation day, yes. the Bible told them that because tomorrow is Sabbath, you must take up two times the amount. And for the first time, when they left it overnight, it never, never stink. Let me tell you something. You see, once God is keeping your resources, then can't run out. They cannot spoil. But what's the irony of it? When God told them to put it up, they went out the other day. They, they, they left some overnight in case God not give them none tomorrow. Lack mm -hmm. of trust. Mm -hmm. Now God told them to leave some for tomorrow. Then go out there the next day. Go look. Mm -hmm. You see your sins yes. here? Sin doesn't have a right way and a wrong way. No. Sin is just the opposition of God. So if God goes left, sin says right. If yes. God chose right, sin says left. Look at what happens now. Now if the individual point of view... Is to be understood here. Then you can imagine with the hundreds of thousands of people, mm -hmm. Moses would have to keep a registry to find out who starts their week on Monday, who starts their week on Wednesday, who starts their week on Sunday. If you say, wait, the pastor clock, you started your week on Monday, so your Sabbath is Sunday. Don't let me see you out there. Hmm. Oh, Brother Joel, oh, you started on Sunday, so your Sabbath is Saturday. Please ensure Joshua that he doesn't go out and do any work on Saturday. Confusion. Oh, Sister Hewitt, oh, Sister Hewitt, man, you start your week late. You started Wednesday, so your Sabbath is Tuesday. Nonsense. It was a set day. Are we talking together, bro brothers and sisters? And listen to what the Lord said to them concerning the preparation day when they were supposed to take up two portions. Uh, verse 23 of Exodus 16. Read it, Pastor Clark. Verse Clark. 23 of Exodus 16. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. What did he say? Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. What must you do? Bake what you can bake what you will bake when? today when must you bake the baking today when must you do the potato pudding today when must you do the caramel pudding preparation when day. must you do the banana bread preparation today. Day. the today. preparation day before sabbath day come on church of god what else must you do and boil what you will boil when must you prepare the yellow yam for sabbath lunch today today when must you prepare the the, 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 the dumpling today. today and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until the morning adventist stop cook big pot pan sabbath hmm. the church get quiet let me say the amen myself amen the Bible says the preparation day is the day for you to do the baking and the cooking the most you should do the next day is to warm it up talk to me somebody hmm. because the sabbath of the lord it's not only being broken by those who don't keep it, but some who profess it, but not keep it properly. Hello, somebody? Now, it is very important that the Lord, um, Sabbath, is kept. But somebody's asking, Pastor, what is the relationship with the Sabbath and the other commandments? What's the relationship um, uh, between the Sabbath and the other commandments? What is wrong if I don't keep the Sabbath, but I am a 90% commandment keeper? I mean, in school, I can still get an A average with that. Come on, somebody. Listen to what James 2, 10 and 11 says. James 2, 10 and 11. Yes. For whosoever shall keep the whole law. The what? The whole yes. law. Yes. And yet stumble in one point. How many points, Pastor? One point. One point shall what? He is guilty of all. Why is that so? For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do have become a transgressor of the law oh my lord and paul was not seeking to explain all of the commandments he was giving an example that the same god who says one commandment says the other can i be plain and practical tonight so if you keep the sabbath but your teeth are still gambon if you're a seven-day adventist and you lie you're still going to burn 
So it's not about keeping support. Oh. It's a sign between me and you throughout your what? Generations. Yes. But Israel was not meant to be the entire world. They were just the people that God chose by his own selection of election mm -hmm. for them to preach the gospel or the, the words of God to the rest of the world so that they could come to and do the commandments according to the covenant. Are we together? Amen. So God did it, and not only so, God said that the Sabbath was a way of sanctifying or separating the people for him to himself. And he says, you shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy to you, and everyone who profanes it should be put to death according to that old covenant. Nowadays, God might not kill you when you break his laws, but it doesn't mean that he's not keeping record. Hmm. Work shall be done for what? Six days, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, the Bible tells us. And as we read forward, the Bible says that it is a perpetual covenant. And that means it is everlasting. We don't focus on physical Israel today or literal Israel, but on spiritual Israel, which is comprised of all those who have accepted Jesus, who are Jews not by circumcision of the flesh, but by circumcision circumcision of the heart are we together so listen to what the bible says now isaiah as a matter of fact exodus says that god wrote the laws the ten commandments which is what finger his own finger and i think i know why god chose that it is because he wanted us to know that this is very special, special. Mm -hmm. because when you're setting up government you need a constitution and when you need a constitution it means that you have laws to work along with are we together brothers and Amen. sisters watch me now isaiah uh, 40 verse 8 says the grass withers and the, the flowers, flowers fell all. but the word of our god shall stand how forever. forever and forever. listen to this one now isaiah 8 verse 20 what about the people who preach against god's words what does it say pastor clark to the law and to the testimony yes if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them wow when you don't have any light what does that make you darkness you have some dress up in a some nice cheap piece suit and long more boot. Darkness. Hmm. You have some when we are drive car, them are take private jet. Darkness. You have some who come in that Oprah Winfrey and other interviews to tell people that uh, I don't think I don't want to judge people, you know. I think there's a place in the kingdom for everybody. And that doesn't mean that you are to repent, you know. So they say everybody can come just as they are and stay just as they are. Darkness! And nowadays we invite people to hear the light, they run. But when they go to the darkness, everybody in the dark. The New Living Translation says it this way. Look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his word are completely in the dark. What's the word? Darkness! Ezekiel 20 says it is a sign between God's people and himself. And that God never expected them to profane it in front of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So even from the Old Testament, God had intended for the Gentiles to learn of the Sabbath and to keep it. I soon get back to that. That's verse 14 of Ezekiel chapter 20. Now watch me now. The important thing is that keeping God's commandments brings you blessings. Yes. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 says, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, take your foot off of God's Sabbath from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy day of the lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own ways nor finding your own pleasure nor speaking your own words young people then you shall delight yourself in the what lord, lord. and i will cause you to ride upon the what High the hills. high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of jacob your father for the mouth of the lord has, has spoken it but sister McIntosh, what makes you a Christian? You follow Christ. So if you are a true Christian, Pastor Shakes, you must do what Christ does. Are we together? When did Christ go to church? When did Christ go to church? Before I tell you that, many people say that they worship on the Lord's day. 
which day is the Lord's day according to the scriptures? Hmm. Listen to Mark 2, 27 and 28. Read it, Pastor Clark. Mark 2, 27 and 28. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and, and not man for the Sabbath. Yes, that means Therefore, it was made for the benefit the, of man. man. Read on. Right? Therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. There is one day in scripture that Jesus says he is the Lord of it. Which day is it, everybody? The, the Sabbath. Sabbath. And according to the Bible, that day is which day of the week? The seventh day. Sister Zorian, you look like the youngest person here tonight. Please get a microphone and come up here. I'm not going to push you down like Brother Joey last night. <laughs> Please get a microphone and come up here. Please position for her to come up here. Please stand right here. All right. I know women don't like to tell people them age, but how old are you, Sister Zorian? Nineteen. Uh, speak a little louder, man. Yes. Nineteen. Oh. You are nineteen. Did we plan this? No. Did I tell you I was going to bring you on stage? No. I just called you just a while ago. Did I tell you what to come up here and say? No. They can't hear you. Tell them loudly. No. Very good. Now you went to basic school. That's true. Yes. Elementary school. You went to early childhood. Did you learn the days of the week in school? Yes, I want you to just tell me the days of the week. The days of the week. No, it's not so elementary school. I'm basic school. Pitney, give it a rhythm. The days of the week are... So Sunday. start off like that. Go ahead now. The days of the week are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Yes, man. Say it one more time. The days of the week are? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And the same way the picnic they used to rock. And for those who say that they don't know which day is day one and which is seven, wait until your grandchild comes home or your son or daughter. I just said, Johnny, come and say the days of the week. And you say, the days of the week are mother. Pitney, how will me send you to school for? Thank you, Zorian. Don't let anybody fool you. Everybody knows the order of the days of the week. Sunday is the first day, so Saturday is the seventh day. Somebody say amen. amen. If you are a Christian, you will go to church according to how Christ went to church. Not according to what you feel comfortable with, but according to what the word of God says. Pastor Clark, Amen. according to Luke 4, 16, when Amen. did Jesus go to church? So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Yes. And as his custom was. Hold on there. As his what church? Custom. It's not talking about the people who charge only for money for their things when they come mm -hmm. for foreign. The custom talks about something that is custom that you do with everybody all the time what was his custom and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day on the sabbath day he stood up to read if you got the opportunity to read in a jewish synagogue or temple you must be a committed jew yourself am i talking to the church Amen. jesus went to church and when sabbath and if god went to church on sabbath at that time they may have got to hello somebody Amen. no I, I wonder if people are hearing the word tonight uh, if you are a christian you will worship how jesus worshiped uh, so many churches which is right the church that worships according to the commandments of god and keeps the sabbath like jesus did somebody say amen amen bishop can't preach this because it's a good mashup in life like nico a pastor mm -hmm. can't preach this because the the, the the church will lock down and the pentecostal church now keep again a pastor lick now preach it. Hello, somebody tabernacle can preach it. Sometimes they say, Pastor Clark, how come the Adventists they manage to have these long programs? And when we do these programs, we have multiple speakers. But you can have one day get a speaker preaching for an entire month or longer. Preach everything. Preach everything. according to Luke 4 16 and he says that he is the Lord of the Sabbath according to Mark 2 27 and 28 are you worshiping according to Jesus hmm. note 
there are eight texts in the old test in sorry there are eight texts in the new testament that talk about the first day of the week mm -hmm. and none of them sanctioned a change in the sabbath from saturday the seventh day to sunday the first day let us analyze them one by one how many texts i said eight, eight. Matthew 28 verse 1. Read it past the clock. Matthew 28 verse 1. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. This is talking about Jesus' resurrection. Are we together? When did the Bible say the first day of the week came, everybody? After the Sabbath. So whichever day is the Sabbath, the following day is the first week, the day of the week all right so come back to that mm -hmm. if you know when is the first day just back up and you will find sabbath mm -hmm. hello somebody Amen. if you know when is the first day just back up and you will find sabbath but i'm not ready to show you that you know yet that's number one did that say anything about a change from saturday to sunday no no the second no. text in the new testament that spoke of the first day mark 16 1 and 2 read it pastor now when the sabbath was passed mary magdalene and mary the mother of james and salome brought spices that they might come and anoint anoint him very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen did it say that anything occurred changing the sabbath from saturday to sunday no from the seventh day to the first day no it's the same story but a different apostle uh, representing what took place uh, so the gospel of mark is talking about the resurrection weekend uh, and when did they say that the people went at the end of the sabbath as it began to dawn towards the what first day of the week once again if you know the resurrection day back up and you will find the sabbath mm -hmm this next text number three mark 16 verse 9 read it pastor now when he rose early on the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of who out of whom he had cast seven demons did the text talk about a change of sabbath from seventh day to first day no no and notice that it said when he rose very early on the first day number four luke 23 verses 54 through 56 and then luke 24 verse 1 let's hear it pastor that day was the preparation and the sabbath drew near wait a second which day is this read on and the women who had come with him from galilee followed after and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid yes then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils yes and they rested on the sabbath according to according what? to the commandment while you go to luke 24 verse 1 matthew mark Luke, all tell us about that weekend. Mm -hmm. Did any of the texts tell you that the Sabbath was changed from the seventh day to the first day? No. No. And some people are still asking, Pastor, when is the Sabbath day? If you know the resurrection day, back up. I soon come back. But let me talk to the Adventists first. Mm -hmm. According to Luke, the day on which Jesus was crucified is known as the preparation day traditionally and biblically it is the day that comes before sabbath when you are supposed to bake the pone pudding cook what you're cooking and prepare for the sabbath because you should not do any what work in it it is called the preparation day so people are now asking how you know which day is the preparation day according to luke it was the day on which jesus was what crucified, crucified. what does the world call it at easter time good, good friday, friday. And what do they call the Sunday for that weekend when they have a big celebration at church? Easter Sunday. And when you go to church, you say, what is happening here today? The Lord is risen. So how you know when him crucified? Mm -hmm. And how you know when him resurrect? But you don't know the Sabbath. Lie! Mm. 
You know the two slices of bread, but you don't know the meat in the middle. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know the two slices of bread, but you don't know the meat in the middle. All these churches who claim not to know for certain which day is the seventh day, then know say Good Friday is the day that he was crucified. Mm -hmm. Preparation day, the Bible calls it. They know that Easter Sunday was the day he was resurrected. The first day, the Bible calls it. So see it there. So if Sunday the resurrection day is the first, when is the Sabbath, everybody? Saturday. Saturday. Don't let the bishop fool you. I don't preach for the money, me preach for the truth. Hmm. Some of the bishops them know, some of them converted afterwards. One of them had the indecency to say to one of our missionaries, I know that the Sabbath is right. I don't go to church on it, but I don't do any work. But then I go to church on Sunday. Hypocrite. Mm-hmm. If you don't profess what you believe, you are what you believe, you are a liar. But if you think that is the nice part yet, Pastor Sheikhs, because the sun was near to set, the women could get to go anoint Jesus' body before they put him into the tomb. Mm -hmm. So the Bible said that the women went and prepared the spices to anoint his body and went and looked which one of the grave sites them then put him in. You know when you go to cemetery you go my grave spot. Yeah. And then they said okay and then they went and keep the commandment uh, uh, keep the Sabbath according to the what? Commandment. Uh, and they never went there Saturday not because they had believed that Jesus was going to rise on the third day like he said. They went there when Sunday morning looking to find his dead body what was the conversation who is gonna move the big old stone out of the way so that we can go and go rub down jesus dead body but mm. when they went there he was risen thank god we don't serve a dead god but that's not the point tonight when did the women go Sunday, Sunday morning. morning then they want the man starts things sister sasha eh? I understand if you allow German just when he dies to stink. Uh, but you want Jesus to stink? Why you take so long? Because they went and keep the Sabbath according to the what? Commandment. They had all day Saturday because maybe night did I come down on the Friday. So why did they go and do it on the Saturday? Because they went to keep the Sabbath according to the what? Commandment. So when did they go? Sunday morning. So we Adventists are do a funeral on Saturday. The chat's weak. Facebook quiet. YouTube silent. Let me go look in YouTube. Let me go and look in YouTube. If they never went to Jesus' funeral on Saturday, I will me do a few. <laughs> Did you hear Jesus rise up Sunday? Bad reputation on the church. You see them sleeping at Sabbath school when COVID wasn't keeping and two twos by a searching for them. Down the funeral. Walk list. Stop it. If they never went to God's funeral on Saturday, I mean, I'll come after you either. Mm. We said the amen for everybody. Amen. Luke 24, verse 1. Read it, Pastor. Luke 24, verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, yes. very early in the morning, yes. they and certain other women with them yes. came to the tomb bringing, bringing the spices. What which, spices? The spices which they had prepared. They brought the tomb. On that morning, but Jesus was risen. Did it say that any change took place? No. No. John 20 verse 1. We're getting there. John 20 verse 1. Now on the Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark. Yes. And saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Did it say that some change took place? No. No. Let's move to the next one. John 20 verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace. Did it say any change took place? No. No. Acts 20 verse 7. Almost now, done. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul Paul read, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. Did any change take place? No. No. Move on to 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. 
1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. Yes. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Did he talk about any change of the day? No. No. Paul was raising some charitable goods to support the persons at Jerusalem who had lost their families because they chose to follow Jesus. Some were kicked out of their homes and he told the brethren, I'm going to pass through on Sunday to collect the banana and the yam or whatever they put together. And guess what? Things happen on every day of the week. So I'm not saying that the other days of the week never existed in scripture. But not for the day of exclusive worship which the Sabbath is meant for. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody somebody saying, Pastor, well I know that Sabbath is the true Bible day that the Bible calls the seventh day Sabbath. But I worship on the first day of the week because it is on that day that my Lord was resurrected from the grave. Listen to what Jesus said that we must use to remember him first corinthians eleven twenty six. for as often as you eat this bread and, and drink, drink this, this cup, cup you proclaim the lord's death till he comes that is that call everybody communion he never changed the day from saturday to sunday to celebrate his life uh, or somebody said no pastor remember i just said it is the day of the lord's resurrection so we now worship on sunday in honor of the resurrection no this is what the bible says you do to honor the resurrection colossians 2 verse 12 pastor buried with him in baptism yes in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of god who raised him from the dead so when you accept jesus christ and you are baptized into the figurative grave of the pool when you come out of it in newness of life it is a type of resurrection baptism is what the bible says you used to honor the resurrection hello somebody Amen. if jesus had changed the sabbath pastor nevins who would be the first persons to know correct pastor um, shakes now I know that you went to NCU School of Religion and Theology. <laughs> the disciples. But which day did they worship on, Brother Joel? Let us see. Because remember, if the commandments were nailed to the cross, now that Jesus was resurrected and he ascended into heaven, then they are supposed to worship according to the new law. Are we yes. together, everybody? When did the disciples go to church? Let me go through them quickly and then I wrap it all up. Acts 13, 14 through 15. Pastor Clark, read strong and read fast. But when they had departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. When did they go into the synagogue? On the Sabbath day. Read, carry on, carry on. And after, and after reading the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue went to them saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Wow. So if you have any sermon, preach, preach it faster, Paul. Preach on. Preach it faster, Peter. Are we together, somebody? Verse 27, Pastor Clark. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. Verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Wait, Pastor, you're moving too quick, a little quicker. Who, are, who said they want the, the sermon to preach next Sabbath? The Gentiles. But Pastor Sheikhs, I was told that Jews keep Sabbath, but Gentiles keep Sunday. Hmm. Hello, somebody? Shaky. I was told that Jews keep Sabbath, but Gentiles keep Sunday. Which day did the Gentiles tell them to come back and preach the word? Next Sabbath. The next Sabbath. Read forward. Now when the congregation had broken up, yes. many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. 
yes. who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Now, listen to this now. Verse 44. Read it with power, Pastor. On the next Sabbath. When did the Gentiles tell them to come back to church to visit? Next Sabbath. On when, everybody? Next Sabbath. On when, Sabbath. Pastor Nevins? On when, <laughs> Facebook? On when, YouTube? Next on Sabbath. when church next on the Sabbath. next Sabbath did they obey read it what does verse 44 say on the next Sabbath who went to church almost the whole city Jews and Gentiles almost the whole Jews city. and Gentiles when did they what did they do they came together to hear the word of God the Sabbath is not only for Jews but also for Gentiles everybody to keep it hello somebody Acts 15, 21. Read further. For Moses had said throughout many generations, those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. They went to church on Sabbath. Acts 16, verse 13. When did the apostles go to church? And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Acts 17, 1 to 4. Read on. Now when, when did the apostles go to church? Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then who? Then Paul, and his, as his custom was... Wait. As Jesus' custom was sister Tapa, when did he go to church? On the Sabbath. On the Sabbath day. So as an apostle, he followed Christ because you can't be a Christian and you don't follow Christ. That's a Christian. Mm -hmm. You're slippery. Mm -hmm. You're sleeping up. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Paul had a custom, Pastor Shakes, to go to church on the when? On the Sabbath day. Read, Pastor. Paul, as his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths, Reason with them from the scriptures. What a plain preacher, preacher are teaching. What was he doing? Explaining and demonstrating the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. And saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. Read verse 4 for me, pastor. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded, here it is, both Jews and gentiles what did you just say pastor clark he persuaded both jews and gentiles where was he teaching and persuading people sister georgia in the, in the what in the temple the synagogue and who did he pursue whom did he persuade both jews, jews and, and gentiles. gentiles my brothers and my sisters some of you love the lord but you never knew these things before and pastor tell us that gentiles keep sunday but jews keep sabbath and we are not jews lie the bible says both mm -hmm. the jews and the gentiles in the early church kept the sabbath yeah somebody say amen if it is clear amen. acts amen. 18 and verse 4 pastor look here the text them enough men have to struggle pastor she to find them pastor clark read acts, acts 18, 18 and verse 4 again and he reasoned in the synagogue every sabbath and did what and persuaded both jews and gentiles oh my lord so you want to tell me say bishop now read this <laughs> no man i don't understand you want to tell me say a pastor with full of Holy Ghost now see this? Hmm. Hello, somebody? You want to tell me, say, prophet, there are some fancy titles, you know? Mm -hmm. You want to tell me, say, the prophet no see it? The cardinal no see it? The overseer. The priest no see it? The pope no see it? Haven't you seen it? Right in the scripture. He reasoned in the synagogue when pastor clock? Every Sabbath. Who was he reasoning with? Both Jews. And Gentiles. Let me tell you something. Both Jews and Gentiles kept the Sabbath after Jesus went back to heaven. So when did Sunday keep, keep him coming to Christianity? Answer, decades later on, when the Roman Catholic Church sought to change God's time and laws. Under Emperor Constantine, AD 321, 
they made an edict that on the venerable day of the sun let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest mm -hmm. do you notice how effective they have become over the years pastor clark mm -hmm. even though businesses are done on sunday typically sunday is relatively a low-key day yes. when it comes on to commercial activity because it's years since man has tried to tamper with god's sabbath and some are falling back at it mm -hmm. hello somebody and if you read in, uh, uh, in history you don't even have to read church history to find it secular history will tell you the catholic church says christians shall not judaize and be idle on saturday but shall work on that day but the lord's day which they call sunday they shall especially honor you can go and do your research on the quote hmm. what a rankingness hmm. so they are trampling on god's laws hello somebody trampling on god's laws god's ten commandments said that you must remember the sabbath day to keep it holy as the fourth one them dash it away and can twist it around mm -hmm. and they throw out the first commandment because god said you must not make any graven image but because they want holy mother mary then tell us then dash away and split the last one in two what's the end of you covet your neighbor's wife not anything to your neighbor and they twisted the sabbath remember to keep holy the sabbath day and just leave it dangling like that look at it when you want to become a convert in catholicism they have the converse catechism a book that you study to learn about the doctrines and the rules and the third commandment they do a question and answer type of approach in the book what is the third commandment the answer the third commandment is remember that thou keep only the sabbath which day is the sabbath answer saturday is the sabbath day why do we observe sunday instead of saturday listen to the answer in the book we observe sunday instead of saturday because the catholic church transferred the solemnity from saturday to sunday i'm going a little long but me soon done bear with me what a rankingness hello somebody why did the catholic church substitute sunday for saturday listen to the answer in the book the church substituted sunday for saturday because christ rose from the dead on sunday and the holy ghost descended upon the apostles on a sunday by what authority did the church substitute Sunday for Saturday? The church substituted Sunday for Saturday by the plentitude of the divine power which Jesus bestowed upon her. Mm. So they said when God said, Jesus said to Peter, I'm going to give you the key. It means that Peter couldn't take liberty. What a rankingness. Mm. Hello, somebody? What a rankingness. What does the third commandment command? The third commandment commands us to sanctify Sunday as the Lord's day. According to Mark 2, 27 and 28, which day did Jesus say that he's Lord of? The Sabbath! Go and do your study in the Converse Catechism. Go and read Bernard Cardinal Griffin's uh, The Fate of Millions, uh, a devout Catholic who can attest to all these things. It is to be noted that the church did not change the divine law by obliging men to worship, they say, but merely changed the day on which such public worship was to be offered. So them say, and I'm like, we have stopped people from worshiping now, but we are telling them, say, no, no, worship on Saturday again, worship on Sunday. According to where in scripture? But listen to this part now for those who say, Pastor, and am I church that come in a God Catholic? But listen what they say. But since Saturday, not Sunday, because you know, Sister Avon, they do not deny the fact that they change it, you know. They accept it and they tell you why they change it. So it's not like they're telling you that they think someday is the seventh day, Brother Joel. They accept that they know that they have changed it. But listen to what they say. To the other churches who keep Sunday. But since Saturday, not Sunday is specified in the Bible. Isn't it curious that non Catholics, Pentecostal, Tabernacle, you know, uh, 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 Apostolic, Baptist, etc., isn't it curious that non Catholics who profess to take their religion directly from the Bible show them when one Bible look like the Pastor Clark? Because some must forget. Turn it around isn't it curious that non-catholics who profess to take their religion straight from the bible and not from the church observe sunday instead of saturday 
All these churches nowadays who worship on Sunday came after the Catholic change today. Yes, of course, it is inconsistent, the Catholic Church says. In other words, I'm a laugh, so I put them to, but then I have nothing to do with Catholic, I'll see like it was someday. But this change was made over 1,500 years ago, before, 15 years before the Protestant movement was born. And by that time, the custom was what? It was what? The custom was already set. Listen to this. They have continued the custom even though it rests upon the authority of the Catholic Church and not upon the explicit text in the scripture or the Bible. The observance remains as a reminder of the mother church, they say, from which the non-Catholic sects, S-E-C-T-S, broke away like a boy running away from his mother's home, carrying in his pocket a picture of mama or a lock of her hair. So all day don't say them run and then run the Catholicism. Then God of Pentecost with the Sunday. Hello, somebody. God of Zion with the Sunday. I said, Don't you trouble Zion, brethren. I am not preaching tonight. Me, I teach. You see how the word plain? Revelation 18, 1 to 5. Pastor, so what happens to the people in those churches who are good people? According to Acts 17, verse 30, at the time when you are ignorant of the truth, God wings. Wings, show me somebody. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. commands all men everywhere to do what? Repent. Put it up the commit detective team. But listen to Revelation 18, 1 to 5. Revelation After these things, 18. I saw another angel. Read it, Pastor. Revelation 18, 1 to 5. Almost there, people. Almost there. Yes. And after these things, I saw another angel coming yes. down from heaven. Yes. Having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Yes. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Continue. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Continue and verse the, 4. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich though they are, through the abundance of her delicacies. They're full verse of money. Four. Continue. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues Why? verse 5 for her sins have reached unto heaven and god hath remembered her iniquities sister you wait god has people in the false churches too Mm -hmm. And you notice what he just said in the revelation judgment our message that we are now living in come out of her my people you are some good. Some of them even live better than Adventists. But you will not go to heaven willfully violating the commandments of God. So now that you know the truth, even if you never knew before, God is saying, repent and do what? Come out of her, my people. Lest you be partaker of her what? Sins and of her plagues. Babylon means religious confusion. They confuse the people by teaching false doctrine. Listen to what God says to those who know this truth that I'm preaching and are still rebelling. Matthew 15, verse 9, Pastor Clark, I'm getting there. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. If you are worshiping in a church that is not obeying the commandments of God, vanity. Hello, 1 John 2, 4 to 6, Pastor. Now, by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments why he who says i know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar well and you want to tell me say the man who preach and tell you say you don't have to keep the sabbath because it nailed to the cross he's a liar I mean, one nice alligator mount boot and one nice turn up turn up bishop he's a liar school. the man is a liar pastor have little behavior oh it's not you speaking it's, it's god talking 
The Bible says, anybody who says they know Jesus and does not keep his commandment is a what? Liar. A liar. According to 1 Samuel 15, when God told Samuel to tell Saul to destroy both man and beast of the Amalekites, you know what Saul did? Disobeyed and kept back the most pretty looking sheep. Mm -hmm. And when Samuel went to get a report on the mission, I heard, meh. Here Saul went out. Oh, Samuel, all that the Lord has done, I have as commanded, I have done. So Samuel Samuel says, where the men they come from? He said, oh, the men not keeping responsibility as a king, you know, not taking it. The men kept back the best of the sheep. What? Oh, they kept them to offer to the Lord. Hmm. But listen to what the, the, the Bible says. Listen to what the response was. Be quiet! Samuel tell him in verse 16, shut your mouth, Saul. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And mm -hmm. Saul said, speak on. Talk, pastor. Verse 22. So Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat Whoa. of lambs. You, you hear that, people? So guess what? Obedience is more important than sacrifice. So even if you open up the Sunday church and lock it up, God say, I'll lie the same way. Even if your tithe so big and fat, you know, and carry it in a cash, you write check, you still lie. Even if you're in there for your barn, oh, pastor, nobody can tell me when to worship. I just saw my granny grow me, and I just saw me a tan. Lie! And listen to what is going to happen now. For rebellion, verse 23 of, of 1 Samuel 12, um, 15, is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you know the truth of God, the commands of God, and you are still worshipping in opposition, God says you're coming like Obi man, same place it will now. Hello, somebody? Yes. Hello, somebody? Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. Revelation 14, 6 to 8. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them on the earth. To every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and do what? Give glory, glory to him to for the hour of his judgment as what? Come, Come and worship him that made the heaven and the earth. What does that remind you of? Genesis, when God made the Sabbath, the sea and the fountains of water. And the Bible says... And there followed another angel saying, What of those who are worshipping in opposition of God's way? Read it, Pastor. Babylon. Verse Babylon. 8. Verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Fallen. Is fallen. That great city because she made all nations, all nations. drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Verse 8. Chapter 14, verse 12 of Revelation says. Chapter 14, verse 14, 12. verse 12. Read it on. Here is the patience of the saints. Of the whom? The saints. Of the whom? The you saints. know what the word patient means? Not just to wait, but to go through a test. What is the true test of the saint? Read it. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Virgin, is the word of God clear? Mm -hmm. Revelation 14 verse 12 says that we must not only keep the commandments of the faith of Jesus, but also keep the what? The, the commandments, commandments of, of God. God. Revelation 12 verse 17. I read it last night. Who was the dragon angry with, pastor? The Revelation 12 verse 17. Verse 17. Revelation 12 verse 17. And the dragon was wrought with the woman. Yes. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Who are they? Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What a plain word. Revelation said that we must come out of her. In Eden, God reserved one tree. Satan said, Nehemiah fights. Sin come. In money, God reserves one tenth. Satan said, spend it by yourself. Hmm. In the week, God reserves one day. Satan said, no matter which day you worship, the one God will have serve. Lie. The popes know. The bishops know. The apostles know. Members, I'm not thinking that you are idiots or fools. You know too. But some of us blind our eyes deliberately to the truth because we have big position in a church and we don't want to give it up. Mm. It's best to be a papa or a little doorkeeper in the truth and to know that you are part of the kingdom of mm. God than for your big officer church and bun. Hello, somebody? Amen. 
for those who think that God's laws will ne ever be passed away, Jesus said that until heaven and earth pass, Matthew 5, not one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass till all is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Psalm 119, 142, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the what? The truth! That is why Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4, verse 24, God is a spirit and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in what? Truth! truth. How do you know where the truth is? John 17, verse 17. What does it say? John 17. John 17, verse 17. I want Pastor Clark to read this one. I'm almost done. I'm a little long with this John one. I think it might be the longest message. 17. Bear with me. I'm almost done. John 17, verse 17. John the Bible 17, says God is a spirit says, and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Tell mm -hmm. me about the truth. Sanctify, through thy tr sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word. Is God's words truth. is what? Truth. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, mm -hmm. is come? He will lead you into what? All, All truth. truth. Question, elder, you it. So how some of them say the Adventists now have no Holy Ghost? According to the scripture, when the spirit comes, he is the spirit of what, Pastor Sheikh? The spirit of truth. So anybody who has the Holy Ghost keeps Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody? If you claim to have the Holy Ghost, I am not obeying the truth. Lie. Hello, somebody? First John 2 4. He who saith I know him and keep it, not his commandment is a what? Liar. Liar. And the truth is not in him. Jesus is truth. And whatever he commands is truth. Uh, John 14, verse 6 says, mm -hmm. Sanctify, Sanctify them, them through, through thy, thy truth. truth. Thy what? Thy word. I mean, no, that's John 17, 17. 17. John 14, verse 6. John I am the way. 14, verse 6. Yes. John 14, verse 6. Verse 6. Stand by my appeal singer. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, yes, and the life. Yes. No man cometh unto the Father but, but by, by me. me. Let me tell you something. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -hmm. Romans 3 verse 4 says, God forbid, yea, let God be true and okay. every man a liar. So my member in the other churches, I know some of you truly love the Lord and you have been doing your best to be a good Christian. It doesn't make you less of a Christian, you know. What is happening now, God is revealing this truth to you in a full way so that you can fulfill John 10, 16. And other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them also I must call. And they shall come that they shall be what? One fold and what? One shepherd. So if you have a conflict at your church because your pastor preaches one thing and the Bible says another. What does the Bible tell us? Let God be true and every man a what? Liar! Choose to follow Jesus. John 14, verse 15, my last text tonight. If you love me, keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments. So many churches. Which is right? The church that obeys all of God's commandments. Tonight you are watching. You are not a non-believer. In fact, you are a baptized Christian. But you have not been worshipping at a church that obeys God's Sabbath. God is saying tonight, Come out of her, my people. You are a sinner, still hasn't surrendered to Jesus Christ. Come out of her, my people. The world is going to be destroyed. You are a backslider. You know the Sabbath must be kept, but you are still living in the sin that you went back to. Come out of her, my people. I will not follow a pastor. I will not follow a man. I will follow Jesus. Because that's the only way I'm guaranteed a place. In God's eternal kingdom. Amen. If you will follow Jesus tonight, click on the link and make a decision for Jesus Christ. Sing that song, Sister Sasha. I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever my lot may be, where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I'll follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me. And though all men should forsake me, by thy grace I'll follow I meet 
with tribulations sorely tempted Tonight, the link has been placed in the chat over and over again. Post them one more time, tech team, in case somebody missed them. Pin them so that they stay at the top of YouTube, at the bottom of Facebook. Jesus Christ invites you tonight to follow him. Pastor Sheikhs, I want you to come and pray the closing prayer for me. Thank you very much, Pastor Clark, for, your, for reading the words of God for us tonight. Tonight, the Lord has spoken to your heart and you know of a truth that you have seen the truth god is saying repent and follow me don't follow the priest if he doesn't follow jesus don't follow the bishop if he doesn't follow jesus don't follow the deacon if he doesn't follow jesus don't follow anyone if he or she doesn't follow jesus do what the Bible says and worship as Jesus did and salvation will be yours. As you make that commitment tonight, Pastor Shakes, please pray. Let us pray, divine God and our Father. We are so grateful for the message you have sent tonight. Clear and practical. I ask of you, Father, that you will touch the lives of those who have listened. I pray, divine God, that you will speak to their conscience. There are those, Father, who are still living in darkness, but tonight you have used your man's servant to make the way clear for somebody. You have shed the light of truth tonight. I pray, divine God, that those who listen will not only listen, but they will put it into practice. Father, I pray that tonight someone will leave from under the umbrella of Babylon and will walk into the ark of safety. They will walk in truth and live in your light. I ask, Father, that you will continue to be with your man's servant. Continue to use him to proclaim the everlasting gospel. I ask, Father, that you will touch us and you will help us that we will live according to your will and your purpose. Those of us who have accepted the message of truth where the Sabbath is concerned, I pray, Father, that we will so live that those looking on will see you in us and be led to glorify you. I ask, Father, one more time that you will wrestle with someone tonight. I pray that you will wrestle with such a one that they will not sleep until they have made the wrongs right. I ask, Lord, that you will do a work in somebody tonight, someone in the chat on YouTube, someone in the chat on Facebook, someone in the studio, someone who has been listening. I pray, Father that you will disturb their spirit until they cry out 